In this video, we'll explore the Texture Area Component tool. This is a special tool that takes a seed component, creates a tiled version of it, and when combined with the tool's unique set of options, you can create a single use or reusable clip art with special features built right into it. Let's have a look at some of the Texture Area Component clip art pieces you have received with your Spire software. This will help give us an overview of their special features, and then we can look at how to edit those and create your own. So we're going to start off with a brand new instance of Aspire, and we're going to go ahead and open up an existing file. Now in your tutorials folder, you're going to see a file called texture area example and frame.crv 3D file. So let's select that and open. Now once your file loads up, you're going to see that we have two sheets set up, one called working and one called frame. We're going to ignore the one that's called frame right now, but we'll get to that a bit later. Let's have a look at our clip art. Now I've gone ahead and downloaded all the clip art packs that came along with my Aspire software. And you'll notice that I have two folders here, one called Texture Area Tiles and one that's called Texture Fill Tiles. The Texture Area Tiles are a set of pre-made seed components that we feel were a nice start for you when you first start exploring the Texture Area Component tool. We should point out that any 3D component can be used as a seed, so you're not limited to these. We'll have a closer look at these in a bit. The Texture Area Fill Tiles are a set of clip art that have been created using seed components and some of the special options that are available in the Texture Area Component tool. When a Texture Area Seed Component has been created, you can save them off as a special 3D clip file with the chosen options embedded in them so they can be used in future projects, or as a starting point for variations of the texture. Okay, let's have a look at what makes these so special. Let's go ahead and choose the block wall underscore tiled piece of clip art, and we're just gonna drag it into our 2D view. Move it into our job space. Now let's tile our views so we can see both the 2D view and the 3D view at the same time. And as you'll see, this is like any other piece of clip art. We have all the different options here that we can use. We can scale, we can add some shape height, base height, or we can go ahead and use the floating properties dialog to edit any of the other properties of this piece of clip art. But note that when we go to actually scale this piece of clip art, it does something a bit different. The software actually takes that seed component and fills in the area with the tiled version of that seed. Once that's done, we can go ahead and we can rotate this if we'd like to, or we can go ahead and bake it just like any other component. But once we do bake it, we lose all of the special features of the tile area component. So let's just go ahead and undo that for now. To help us better understand what's happening, let's take a look at the texture area component tool options and how they relate to this component. Many of these options will make more sense once we get into creating our own. So with that selected, let's go back to our design tab and we'll take a look at our create a texture area component. When we select that, you see that these options are already set up for this particular piece of clip art. So right now we can go ahead and transform our object like we can any other piece of clip art. We can use this option to change the size of our seed component. We can add spacing to the clip art, to our tiling, we can add an XY shift to our tiling, and you'll see that in this particular case, there's an XY shift already put in place. We can use a reflection, and that will kind of randomize the way that our tiled version of our textured area tile looks. We can also use a combine mode, and we can add in a name for that if we would like to. So just go ahead and close this down. Now if we go ahead and go to our components tab here, or we look at our drop down here, you'll see that we have a 3D clip file. This 3D clip file is special because all of those options that we saw that we have chosen inside the texture area component tool are embedded within this piece of clip art. Now let's take one of the texture area tiles that you receive with your software and create our very own texture area fill tile so we can better understand those options. Just go ahead and delete this out of here and go back to our clip art tab. Let's go down to our texture area tiles and we are going to choose this one right here, the domed pyramid scallop two. We're just going to double click on that and that'll bring it right into the center of our job space. Now in our 2D view, we're just going to zoom here so we can see everything 
in the 2D view nice and clearly. So if we have a peek at the 3D view, you're going to see that we have all of our regular options here for a piece of 3D clip art. And again, if we go ahead and size this or scale it, it'll scale like any other piece of 3D clip art that you have. Again, you don't need to use our texture area tiles that we've included. You can go ahead and use any piece of clip art that you would like to. So let's just go ahead and size this down a bit to right about there and let's move it down into the bottom corner of our job. Let's go over to our design tab and have a look at turning this into a textured area component. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the software that this is the component that we want to use. So we'll just click apply. And as soon as we do that, it'll fill in our full job space with that tiled component using all of the defaults here that have been set up for us. And if we'd like to, we can zoom out a little bit in the 3D view and we can illustrate that it's now a tileable piece of 3D clip art, which is kind of neat. Okay. Let's have a look at the edit texture area component option. So if we click that in the 2D view, you'll see that our seed is now selected, keeping in mind that you're going to need to look at the 2D view to see this. And we can go ahead and size this up, the seed component to be whatever size we need. And this may come in handy if you want to pre sort of scale your component to fit the area that you need. Okay, let's go back to our transform object option here. The first thing we'll look at is going to be the spacing. Now we can go ahead and adjust the spacing left to right or up and down based on a percentage of the seed tiles size. And we can either go in a positive or a negative direction if we want to. So for right now, let's just go ahead and try a positive 50%. Press the space bar. You see that now we've gone ahead and shifted those over by half the size of our original tile. And we can do the same here with the up and down direction if we want to. Let's just go ahead and set those back to zero again. Now we can also go ahead and apply an XY shift to the rows and to the columns. So let's go ahead and add a X shift of 50%, so that's half the tile. And you'll see that now this center row has been shifted over. And we can do the same for our columns if we'd like to. So let's go ahead and put those back to zero again. Okay, now let's take a look at the reflection. Now this is the way the software is going to reflect or mirror the tile. So if we look at this group of four tiles, that references the four bottom tiles we have here in our left bottom left hand corner of our job. So if we go ahead and choose to flip this tile or reflect this tile, you see it flips it over. And I can do the same with this bottom one so that way I can end up with this interesting sort of star shape. And these reflections come in really handy if you're working with a more organic seed tile like a brick wall. This will help to randomize how things look and also maybe even help to kind of line things up a little bit better in the end. Now we can go ahead and choose the combine mode that we'd like to use. We can give this a name if we want to. And then we can go ahead and click apply to accept all of those options that we've selected, and then we can close this down. Now again, if we take a look in our 3D view, this is going to react just like the tiled area components that we saw before. That's really kind of neat. Now if we wanted to go ahead and save off this um, texture area component as a piece of 3D clip art with all those options embedded in it, all we need to do is either go over to our Components tab, or we can go to our component drop down here and we'll see that we have the original component that we brought in. Now it's been hidden so that we don't see it in the end. And then we have the resulting tileable component here. So we can just go ahead and rename that if we want to. Right click on it and we can export this out as a 3D clip file. 
And when we do that, all of those options will be saved off within that piece of clip art. We can just go ahead and call this test. And there you go. Now I can come back to that anytime I want to and reuse that component if I'd like to. And also I can load that in and I can go ahead and modify any of the options that I just set up. So I can really create a whole bunch of different textures with that one seed component. Now there's a couple of things I'd like to mention is that if you wanted to, for instance, rotate this tile, the original seed tile, there's a certain way you need to do that. So let's just go ahead and delete this out here. And let's go back to our original seed. So if I went into my 3D view here, and this is back to its original, it's like a regular, regular everyday component, nothing special. And I rotate this around by 90 degrees. And then I go into my texture area component. And I go ahead and hit apply. Notice that the tile will be turned around again. The software remembers the original orientation of that tile. So if you wanted to keep the edited orientation, you're going to need to bake that seed tile before you actually go in and create a texture area component. Or you're going to have to go ahead and rotate this tile result and then use it in its rotated form. There's another interesting option that you can use when creating your texture area component that I'd like to illustrate now. Let's just go ahead and close this down. And we'll delete this out of there. And we'll go ahead and we're going to choose a brand new component to tile. So let's just go ahead and use this guy here. That's great. Now in our 3D view, or in our 2D view, we can go ahead and just draw a basic ellipse. And then close this down. Now with that ellipse selected and holding down the shift key and selecting that component, we can go back into our create a texture area component. And as soon as we hit apply, notice that we've limited the tiling to that shape. Now you can use one, two, or three, or four, as many closed vectors as you like to, to isolate or to limit the tiling of your texture area tile. This is really exciting for all kinds of reasons. And I'm going to illustrate one of those right now in a very practical example of making a frame. Let's go ahead and close this down. And we'll delete that. We'll delete this ellipse. Let's zoom out. And let's just go ahead and double click on our frame sheet. And zoom in our 2D view. We'll take a look top down on what we have in our 3D view. Now you see in our 3D view, we have a few components here. If we drop down our component tree, you'll see we have borders and a backing and a frame level and a texture level. So let's go ahead and look back down on this again. Let's go back to our clip art and we're going to look at our texture area tiles and we're going to zoom down a little bit here and we're going to grab the rough weave one dot 3d clip file. And we'll just go ahead and see as it's still a regular piece of clip art, we can just size it down just a little bit. And with that selected, we can hold down our shift key and we can select this inside border and this outside border. And we can go up to our design tab and back down and create a textured area component. We'll just go ahead and click apply. And then we can go ahead and mess around a little bit with our options that we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a spacing of minus 50. Press the spacebar. Then we're going to go down to our XY shift. And we're going to put 50% in here. Press the spacebar. And then we're going to go ahead and flip these two. And we'll see that now we have this really nice weave filling in that ear area on a, of our frame. And then we can go ahead and play around with the shape height if we'd like to, or the scale of that to fit in there nicely. Look straight back down on that again. And that looks really great. Now easily and quickly, we can go ahead and change up that texture. So let's go ahead and close this down. Let's go back up to our texture layer here, texture level here. And we're going to go ahead and hide that. Off click that. We'll go back to our clip art. Let's go ahead and try this stones piece of clip art that we have. And again, while it's still a regular piece of clip art, let's just go ahead and scale this down a little bit. 
With that selected, we hold down our Shift key and we'll grab those exact same two vectors. Let's go to our Design tab, create a Texture Area Fill, and all we're going to do is just hit Apply. And because this is an already tileable texture, then you see it fits in really nicely right into that space. And all we're going to need to do now is just go ahead and scale it up a little bit to give us some nice round stones. That looks really great. And we have two variations of that frame using our texture tile components. Don't forget, if that tile or the seed tile isn't quite the right size, after you've gone ahead and tiled it, you can select your tiled component, go up to edit your texture area component, and then your 2D view, you can go ahead and size that down if you'd like to. And that will update your full tiled area. Now the texture area component tool can become even more useful when combined with your own 3D modeled seed components or using the create component from import a bitmap option with bitmaps that are tileable. When we talk to users about creating a texture area component, we like to drive home the idea that the more you play around with the different options that you have, the more you're going to be surprised at how fun and useful this tool is in your software.